it in a speedy emergence of these very two nations. We Biafrans and Ambazonians have resolved from this very day to do what we must do and everything humanly possible to ensure that we change not only the narrative, but to begin the process of the eventual reclaiming of our long shared collective heritage, a shared heritage that goes back to the beginning of time. Today, we are indeed on the brink of history. A lot of people never wanted us to get together. A lot of people never wanted us to identify with one another. Those who are benefiting from our misery and our pain, today we have reduced all of them to nothing. Because genetically and culturally, Biafrans and Ambazonians go back to the beginning of time as original peoples of southern Nigeria and southern Cameroon. Geneticists have sequenced and dated the DNA of Biafrans and Ambazonians and discovered them to be one of the oldest DNA on planet Earth. The earliest culture builders on planet Earth known to archaeologists and anthropologists as the Bantu peoples of, of Africa originated from within the regions of Biafra and Ambazonia. We are old people. We are the people of the ancient. From these very Biafran and Ambazonian regions, the Bantu homeland and the cradle of human civilization, the great Bantu migrations of 1,500 BC to 2,000 BC took place to introduce our collective civilizations to other corners of Africa and beyond. The history of our two peoples, Biafrans and Ambazonians, has indeed been intertwined and shared from time immemorial. Our forefathers were very much aware of this shared heritage and destiny of Biafrans and Ambazonians. And at different times in history, the coming together of Biafran and Ambazonian peoples under collective leadership and cooperation has produced radically rewarding results. We should perhaps mention a few examples here. Examples of the powerful and rewarding results that Biafra and Ambazonia partnership could produce, we are seen in the liberation of Haiti. A former slave colony of the French between 1791 and 1804 through a historic revolution. Our people are noted because they are warriors. Ambazonians and Biafrans alike fought side by side as one people in Haiti that made Haiti the first black nation on this very earth to shake off the shackles of slavery and domination. This is the origin of such extant Asian phrases as Igbo, Gramon, and Igbo, Lele, as you have today in Haiti. Similarly, during colonial invasion and the subsequent colonization of these regions, which was nothing but a sophisticated form of slavery, our peoples, Biafrans and Ambazonians, fought colonial enslavement with everything they had. The exploits of a Kumeku, the secret society of freedom fighters in Biafra land that engaged the British invading colonialists for over three decades is still very fresh in our minds. Again, it was to people from Biafra and, and Ambazonia that the burden of ending colonial occupation politically in the region fell on their shoulders. Hence, we have the activity of the Nigeria Council, the, the National Council of Nigeria and Cameroon, NCNC, of course, well superintended by Dr. Namdi Azikiwe, which was coordinated by nationalists from Biafra and Ambazonia as reference in the anti-colonial movement that would produce 
the present Berlin Conference designed states like Nigeria and Cameroon, which unfortunately Biafras and Amazonians are suffering untold hardships under. The sufferings and pains of Biafrans and Amazonians are carefully and diabolic, diabolically designed neo-colonial schemes to ensure that our peoples who are natural leaders of the black world never develop or make any progress consequently leading to the subjugation of the entire African continent in perpetuity. This diabolical neo-colonialist scheme has not succeeded because the colonial enslaver simply decreed it into existence. No, it was succeeding because some fellow black people or Africans decided to make themselves willing tools in the enslavement of the rest of their brothers and sisters. And this is something that we are determined to bring to an end. This trend is by no means a recent trend. It is indeed a trend that is as old as the Arab enslavement of Africans and will be perfected through the European enslavement and the colonization through invasion of the rest of black Africa. In Africa, there are groups whose whole economic existence and their worldviews have evolved around their collaboration with those who have no value for African lives and want to destroy Africans by every means. That is how the phenomenon of the Fulani terrorist proclivity have been created over the ages to destroy everything that is African. It is a proclivity that has engendered the existence of not less than six or seven terrorist groups that are owned and operated by the Fulani people. Terrorizing people and grabbing their lands across West African sub-region, as well as the areas bordering the entire Gulf of Guinea. It is a proclivity that has been enabled by some evil people, both outside and inside Africa. Both Biafrans and Ambazonians have been victims of this evil. And today, going forward, we have resolved to bring it to an end. Over the years, our grandfathers and our grandmothers have stormed this terrorist proclivity in the hope that it would go away somehow. But it's clear to all that after so much turning of the other cheek, because when they slap us on one cheek, we turn the other cheek for them to slap as well. And payment in blood, these bullies never ever became reasonable. Instead, it has emboldened them. This is part of the reason why Biafrans and Ambazonians are coming together this very day to confront our collective enemies together. We are also coming together to rediscover our shared biological and cultural heritage. Extant anthropological studies point to the cultural unity of Biafrans and Ambazonian peoples because we are one people. Anybody who is doubting us should please consult their genetic studies and DNA mapping, which point to a singular origin of both Biafrans and Ambazonians. It is therefore only logical that this day would come. We are grateful to Almighty God in heaven, to for determining that this alliance must be formed so that God's own people will be set free as only him has decreed. We are indeed on the brink of history. So far, even though our struggles for freedom have had different trajectories, Biafrans and Ambazonians have a shared destiny. Our collective destiny is to once again lead the continent of Black Africa to achieve the type of civilization that humanity will marvel at just like our Bantu ancestors did when they civilized the whole of the known world around them. In the coming days, we Biafrans and Ambazonians will be communicating to the world in sequence. And as the need arises, our blueprint for cooperation, preparatory to the re-emergence of our nations, just like the almighty God in heaven, Chukukika Biyama has decreed. 
in this vein, I hereby welcome every Biafran, every Ambazonian to a new dawn of our shared destiny and collective leadership of our peoples to lasting freedom. Long live the Republic of Biafra. Long live the nation of Ambazonia. Thank you very much. I now. Yes, sir. And that was a press briefing coming from our leader, Mazi Namdi Okukano, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. And let me use this opportunity to welcome the leader of the Ambazonian Liberation of War, Dr. Cho Ayaba. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks to my brother, Mazin Namdikano, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. We have assembled here today in front of our two peoples to declare our intentions, to work together, to ensure our collective survival from the brutal annexation that have occurred in our both nations. We understand the difficulties that both peoples, the people of Biafra and Ambazonia, have faced in the last 60 years. But we have been discussing in the past few months to ensure that our collective strength be brought together to be more impactful to ensuring that we do not bequeath to the next generation a more oppressed homeland than we inherited. The Ambazonia and Biafra Alliance is critical in an area where Nigeria and Cameroon have established two autocracies that have used violence as a political tool to suppress our both peoples. Within Nigeria itself, you have in the north, the Hausas and Fulanese, who have cross-border relationships in Niger. In the west, you have the Yorubas with cross-border relationship into Benin. The people of Biafra have been denied access to Ambazonia. And we must recall that during the Biafran War of Independence, why countries like France, that is the highest investor today in Nigeria, provided support. Countries like Ivory Coast, Norway, and others. The one country being ruled by a Fulani man that refused Biafra the opportunity to receive support to prevent genocide was Cameroon. Because Ayijo, a Fulani man, preferred the domination that was exercised by the Fulanis from within Nigeria and Cameroon over the Biafran people. Ambazonia is the only access you have. And within Cameroon itself, while the people have relationship with Central African Republic and other countries, Biafra is our only closest neighbor with massive investment within Ambazonia. Biafra is also the place where thousands of our people have sought refuge and have been treated with great hospitality. And for this, I want to thank the people of Biafra who have taken care of our refugees and I ask you to continuously support them. Going forward, we are going to work together in different areas to ensure that our both nations emerge from these exclusive servitude imposed by both Cameroon and Nigeria. In coming to this joint press conference, I understand the worries of Ambazonians, and I have taken time to brief other leaders to make sure that I can allay the worries and fears of our people. These worries and fears is rooted in history. We were part of the Eastern 
powers of assembly in any group. But one great difference is when our leaders walk out of that house, there were no helicopter gunships that mauled our people. Our people were not massacred because we chose to establish a capital in Boya. But in the last four years, we have observed with great dismay the rapacious policy of Cameroon, the tyranny of a system that is intended on governing Ambazonia without consent. And if I would be given a choice to make Biafra my friend or Nigeria my friend, I will understand that the state that kidnapped and renditioned hundreds of our people who were then locked in communicado, subjected to torture, brutality, and sentenced to life in jail, was not the people providing sanctuary to our people. If I would be given a choice between Nigeria and Biafra, I will recall the thousands and thousands of Biafrans who are part of our economy. I will recall history that when we had a wonderful trade with Biafra, the port of Tico was vibrant. The port of Victoria was vibrant. So too was the port of Port Harcourt and Calabar. But the Fulanese that have been governing Cameroon at that time dismantled our economic infrastructure and made it impossible for bilateral trade between our country and Biafra to take place, subjecting our population to impunity, making it impossible for any cross-border relationship. As you have said, we are one people interculturally linked. But I also want to remind Ambazonians that I take your concerns seriously. That is why this alliance is split into three phases. First, to ensure that both peoples are liberated from the tyranny imposed on them. And to establish within a transitional period methods of collaboration and cooperation to dismantling the economic blockade that have impoverished our two nations. And within this period, there will be massive consultations within Ambazonia to ensure that any treaty that will be binding between the two nations is approved by the Ambazonian people. This relationship and alliance is critical across the globe. Nations and peoples and countries are coming together to ensure the prosperity of their people, to ensure the liberation of their people. The Biafrans have been subjected to genocide, ecological hazard by a few greedy people who have hijacked an entire nation and make sure that they treated the Biafran people with impunity. For the past 60 years, Cameroon rolled its tongues into Ambazonia, subjected our people to economic deprivation, political asphyxiation, cultural intoxication. Those who spoke were murdered. Those who escaped were haunted like games rendition and incarcerated incommunicado in the jails of the occupier. For us, the Ambazonian people, we have resolved in the past four years to match Cameroon method for method and ideal for ideal, to make sure we arm ourselves to the teeth, to ensure that the brutality that our people have been subjected to in the past 60 years comes to an end so that we can establish within our own borders, economic and political systems that are indigenous to our own cultural and political realities, that our leaders are accountable to our people, that our bounties will be exploited for the development of our people and those who believe in our own values, that our nations will never again, the nation of Biafra and Ambazonia, taken hostage by a few greedy men our women raped, our children subjected to misery, and our men turned into boys. The era of domination that benefited a few within our continent and beyond its shores, leaving millions destitute, 
leaving millions moving across the Atlantic, dying in the ocean, must come to an end. We must redefine the contours of the continent. For the notion of Pan-Africanism must be re redefined to ensure that self-determination of nations that have been caught under political systems that do not represent their interests becomes the norm. Before there was Nigeria, there was Biafra. You cannot allow yourselves to be taken hostage by a few men who've decided to rape your soils for their own interests. So too are Ambazonians. We don't seek this alliance as an aggression against others. We seek this alliance as a means of self-preservation against tyrannies that have curtailed for both peoples our right to survive within our own shores. We mean no evil to others, for everyone has a right to self-determination. We are determined to exercise this for ourselves and for our people to ensure we be quick to the next generation, a better country than we inherited. God bless Biafra. God bless Amazonia. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that wonderful, wonderful speech coming from Dr. Joe Ayaba. Uh, I would uh, want to ask just one question, one question, but then I think it will be very, very imperative, you know, to ask two questions. I wanted to ask one, that both leaders will address, uh, both of you will address this question, but I want to ask individual question because, you know, this is a historic, a historic event. And uh, I want to seize this opportunity to ask these questions. Now, to our leader, uh, Mazi Namde Okukano, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, the Ohamadike one of Biafra, uh, I want to throw this question to you. Maybe not question per se, but let me throw this question this way. Just a uh, few days ago, I came across article, an article written by New York Times. And this article say, and I quote, more than 1,800 prisoners are broken out of jail in Nigeria. Gunmen bearing machine gun and grenade storm a prison in a restive part of Southeast Nigeria, many refer to as Biafra. Many refer to as Biafra, letting loose any imminent who wanted out. Now, I'm going to also take a line from this same article, which says, Biafra in the same New York Times, and that it will say, it has been 51 years since the end of the Nigeria Civil War, in which people of Eastern region broke away from the rest of the country. Biafra, the state they created came to an end when its leader surrounded after 30 months of fighting. Then, but the Biafra dream is alive and well. And when I listen to both of you, I listen to Dr. Cho Ayaba, I, I see the same agony, the same story, the same kind of, uh, uh, you know, experience. I also have come across an article which says that the Ambazonian, some of the Amb Ambazonian leaders who sought for refugee in Nigeria were arrested secretly and repatriated back to Cameroon against 
international law. Now, why I made references or try to read from this report is because a lot of people may have somehow a different opinion, divergent views about the historic alliance between Biafra and Ambazonia. I want the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, our leader, Mazen Namdekano, what assurance are you giving to Biafrans? Knowing fully well that New York Times, for the very first time since the beginning of the restoration struggle for Biafra, they are now recognizing Biafra in the east side of Nigeria. Can we hear your opinion on this? Yeah, um, thank you very much, Simon. And once again, let me commend my dear brother, Dr. Joe Ayaba, um, for this event this evening, morning, noon, or night, depending on where you're watching us from. I did say many years ago that a time will come when they will talk about us. And that time has come. And they are talking about us because of what we have been able to exhibit over the years consistency, determination, resoluteness, and of course, above all, being ideologically, philosophically, and spiritually consistent in what we are doing. Because the word secession, I do not recognize. The word, um, should I say, extremism, I do not recognize either. Because as I have always argued, you cannot secede from something that you're older than. The white man came and decided to create Nigeria. Nigeria is not the creation of God. And if we continue along this same line, including my dear brothers and sisters of Ambazonia, then ultimately the world will recognize what we are yearning for and do something about it. If they fail to do something about it, we will do something about it ourselves. Because one thing is certain, when did Cameroons come into existence? You heard our dear brother there, the leader of the war of Ambazonia, telling us that these same Ambazonians are looking at today. At the time, they were in Enugu, attending the same Eastern Constitutive Assembly in Enugu. The man you're looking at, Dr. Cho Ayoba, and all Ambazonians at the time had their political representation. It is a very good thing. I saw the map that was displayed when um, Dr. Ayaba was speaking. Look at it very carefully. You will see that when it came to us, it used to be called the NCNC, National Council of the Cameroon, of National Council of Nigeria and the Cameroons. When they say National Council of Nigeria, they were referring to Ambazonia. Ambazonians were part of us in Enugu before. Somehow, the powers that be determined that they should be cut away from us, that we are no longer, we are no longer one people. What gives you recognition is truthfulness. What gives you recognition is consistency. What gives you, consist uh, what gives you recognition ultimately is the ability to let your enemies understand that you will sacrifice anything sacrificable to get that which is right for your people. And that is why we are getting a mention in New York Times, as you would say, you did not mention CNN because the same thing happened to CNN, even quoted me for the very first time. I'm not sure they've done that before. CNN quoted what I said regarding the um, attack of a non gun I wouldn't call it an attack, the granting of grace uh, and freedom to people who are illegally incarcerated in Nigeria. And I do hope as time goes on that the same level of cons consistency and spirit of never say die will go into all ethnic nationalities within Nigeria and beyond that are yearning for freedom. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that uh, insight on, on that uh, report. Yes, I didn't come across the CNN report yet. Uh, I'm going to look into that. Uh, Dr. Cho Ayaba, my question, or, you know, I would ask you to make a comment, is on the fact that you have actually elaborated a lot here, the, uh, the, uh, the, the dividends, or what I should say, uh, what await the Ambazonian people, uh, you know, through this alliance with the Biafrans. We've also have seen 
how the Nigeria government illegally repatriated uh, Cameroonians, uh, Amazonians back to Cameroon uh, against the international law. And uh, of course, what assurance or, you know, what assurance are you giving people of Amazonia that the alliance between Amazonia and Biafra is going to be more uh, fruitful than ever having anything to do with Nigeria, considering the fact that they have breached international laws, repatriated people from or people of Amazonia back to Cameroon, and today most of them are in jail, unconstitutionally. Uh, thanks for that question. If you look at the map across the globe, whether within the European context, if you look at why there was a Second World War or First World War, you will discover that there are Germans within uh, Switzerland. There are Germans, the, the Germanic race in, in, in Austria. You have the French across in Quebec and in, in, in Belgium and different places. And though, uh, although this is, this is uh, what I call a linguistic uh, kind of unism, these countries have always sought alliances uh, with people with whom they have some cultural attachment for both cultural expansion, economic development, and purposes of self-preservation. And as, as I stated, the Biafrans are isolated, Amazonians are isolated. These two nations form an economy of close to 72 million people, put together bigger than the economies of more than 100 United Nations countries. The Amazonian economy has been sustained from Biafra, where people have had access to cheap goods. We are also aware that more than 20 years ago, Cameroon helicopter bo uh, gunships bombed boats that were coming in from Biafra, bringing in goods into Amazonia. We also know that while the houses and Fulanis are highly attached in the north to countries beyond the border of Nigeria, like Niger, and strengthening that alliance for both economic and political power. And the Yorubas are attached on the other side with Benin, ensuring their survival and self-preservation. What choice does the people of, do the people of Biafra have? It's Ambazonia. And so this political alliance is crucial for the purposes of self-preservation of the two nations, and also to let the others who have occupied our both countries know that we will not choose our friends based on the definitions and interests of those who've subjected us to impunity. As you've rightly said, a few years back, hundreds of Amazonians were illegally kidnapped. Those who are even sought asylum within Nigeria. They were subjected to psychological torture in prisons across Abuja, chained like sheep to the slaughter, conditioned to Cameroon, where they were incarcerated, detaining communicado, sentenced to life in jail. This is the collaboration between Yaoundé and Asorok. It serves the interests of Yaoundé and Asorok. It doesn't serve the interests of Ambazonia. And it has put to shame, it has brought shame to the Biafran people who have shown great hospitality to our people, including ensuring that there is protection for our refugees. Even though the refugees are within uh, the Biafra land, we have observed with great shock attempts by Yaoundé to work with certain political individuals within Nigeria to repatriate our refugees despite the raging war. This 
collaboration, as I have said, is defined in three phases. I will be leading on behalf of the Amazonian people, working with the people of Biafra and the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra to ensure that in phase one of this collaboration, we are able to work together to ensure the self-preservation of both peoples. However, the Biafrans choose to do it with their choice. For us, Ambazonia, the right to self-defense is a right that we have invoked because the only weapon of choice that Yaoundé and Cameroon has used in 60 years is that of rifles, machine gun. We have risen up, arm ourselves, and we will continue to arm every Amazonian to make sure that even after independence, there will be no threat to our independence as we saw 60 years ago. And I think it is important that when we establish a free and independent nation beyond our borders, there should be another nation that is free to engage in trade, commerce, dismantling the economic blockade that both countries of Nigeria and Cameroon have imposed. As we move forward, we will be looking at the details to expand the details of our collaboration. And as I know, and as I said in my opening statement to assure the Amazonian people, in times of peril, leadership must make decisions that safeguard the interests of the people. There will come a time when the Amazonian people will be able to certify the instruments of collaboration to be binding to both Amazonia and Biafra. And that can be invoked under international law as binding to both peoples. I trust my brother, Mazin Namdu Kano, for his steadfastness, for his ability to galvanize and mobilize the Biafran people. To you, the Biafran people, this is what I'd like you to know. You cannot allow people to invade your land, use your resources to arm themselves and subject you to torture while you escape across borders to establish little niches in different countries. You must rise up in whatever way, form or shape to defend your right to exist, defend your right in the land of your birth, to exploit your resources for the benefit of your own people and to make sure you can be quick to the next generation a better place than you have inherited. A genocide took place in your land. Those people didn't die in vain. In the past few weeks, we have observed with shock and awe helicopter bomb, uh, gunships throwing bombs in your suburbs. Those people who have died have not died in vain. And I can assure you, we will establish within the Gulf of Guinea stable political systems that would ensure that our partners beyond our region can treat with us with respect for our independence and to make sure that we can reap the benefit of international trade. What we should never allow again, and I say we, Biafrans, Ambazonians, and all peoples within the continent who are blessed with the bounties that God has given us, is to allow tyrants and murderers to hijack our states and use it as experiments for murder and genocide. That era has come to an end. Well detailed comment on that, uh, on that uh, question I asked. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, both of you have done so well. And uh, uh, our viewers, uh, also thank you for, for watching. We are going to ask you, both of you, to give somehow uh, a closing uh, statement, you know, word of encouragement to both uh, countries, both nations, uh, especially uh, those of our men in the forefront of this struggle.
want you to give word of encouragement. In very brief. We can start from Mohammed Bike of Biafra. Yes, thank you, Simon. And once again, thank you, my dear brother. I'm Dr. Cho Ayaba. What I have to say is very simple, is that we have embarked upon a mission and a journey from which there is no turning back until victory is assured. What we can also tell our people today is one thing, that we are not going to stop what we are doing until freedom is secured for all our peoples. It doesn't matter what the enemies do. It doesn't matter what they intend to do. It doesn't matter the sort of collaborations they may enter into. It doesn't matter what form of brutality or any form of brutality they may wish to visit upon us. We are resolved and determined to make sure that we prosecute this very campaign to its glorious end, because in the end, we're going to emerge victorious. There are men who are fighting, people who are defending our land against the excesses of Fulani Janja with these those who have come from the Sahel to take over our land. We're not going to allow them to do that. I must encourage them and also encourage Ambazonian fighters as well in all that they are doing to ensure that the land of Ambazonia is safe. We must not make this very mistake that most people do all the time to think that help is going to come from somebody else. Nobody's going to help us. We are here to help ourselves and God willing, we are going to emerge victorious. So I thank all people watching right across the face of this planet Earth today, and especially to this very union of Biafra and Ambazonia, because I do know that in time to come, it will yield positive fruits and results that will help propel both nations towards freedom. And that's why we are here. That is what we are dedicated to doing. And that is what we are going to do every blessed day of our lives until both peoples are free. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, Yohama Dike of Biafra. Uh, Dr. Cho Ayaba, can you give uh, the men in front line your word of encouragement? Thank you very much. First, I would like to thank my brother for the courage. Uh, both of us standing here today is out of courage. And I want to thank you very much for having that courage to make sure that we can step out of the cocoon and stick together. To our both peoples, the people of Biafra and Amazonia, I would like you to be assured that in our greatest moments of need, like those of others before us, they've established alliances to ensure their survival. Look back and you find roads and our villages littered with the charred bodies of brave men and women who rose before us to attempt to defend our lands. You look back and it's horror and pain faced by millions of people We've never known happiness. We've never known peace. Facing ecological and economic disaster of untold proportions imposed by others who have sought to occupy our both countries without our consent. Look back and there is genocide and hopelessness. You look forward, there is hope but you require determination and courage to marshal on and to make sure that we can both be free. Amazonians must know the tenure of Cameroon in Amazonia has come to an end. The last chapter of its presence has been written by the blood of our people and its tyranny and subjugation and impunity and abuse shall never again be tolerated. We will establish going forward friendship with people who have similar experiences and will mean good for us. But we'll also ensure we proudly safeguard and preserve our independence. To you, the people of Biafra, you have to stand firm. The past 
has been difficult. The present is hopeless. But the future under your present leadership and construct is very hopeful. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, this has been now a very successful press briefing. And on this day, the 9th of April 2021, history has been made. Thank you very much, Ohamadike of Biafra. Thank you very much, Dr. Cho Ayaba. And may God bless you. Now, our viewers, we are going to continue and we are going to have some panelists who are going to join me uh, in the studio. And we are going to make some kind of uh, uh, analysis on the speeches of these both leaders. So our viewers, don't go away. Sit right there and watch as we bring in panelists. And remember that the collaboration and alliance between Biafra and Ambazonia has just started. Most of the thing is not going to be happening on social media. We are not going to be broadcasting as we move forward in this quest for freedom of both nations. For the actions, collaboration as a result of the collaboration or what you are going to be seeing from now on will tell you what is going behind the scene. The history has been made. And somebody like me and you watching today, we are all happy to be part of this great day that I've just started. Thank you and stay tuned as we come back. Ladies and gentlemen, citizens of Amazonia and Biafra, the national anthem of Amazonia. Ladies and gentlemen, citizens of Biafra and Ambazonia, the national anthem of the indigenous people of Biafra. <laughs> <laughs> 